What's going on, ladies and gentlemen, my brothers and sisters, Godly Vibes family? We are back once again. And before we even go into this topic, which is going to be on um, Islam again, but there was different verses quoted from two individuals, God Logic and this other guy named Grayson, right? Pretty big uh, discussion. We're just going to jump in on two topics that they were talking about. But before we go into that, I want my brothers to go and introduce yourselves. Amen. Brother Nick. Amen. Bless family. Amen. Dennis Stevenson, you know it. How y'all doing? Dame. Name is Somnus. How y'all doing? Amen. Amen. Good to, got, good to have you brothers here again, man. Nick and uh, Dennis, you guys were here last time. Amen. Dame, this is your first time here. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Appreciate you for having but me. But amen. Man. Uh, these are my brothers. Hallelujah. We're, we're going we're gonna to touch on a couple different things. For those who don't know, God Logic, you know, um, is a, 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 a an uh, apologetic um, Christian, hallelujah, uh, I've watched many of his um, debates with Muslims. He's such, he's a really calm individual, which um, is really good to have, especially when you don't have to, like, really yell at somebody to prove a point. He's really just mm-hmm. quoting their own scriptures and showing them the f- the the flaw in it, and they don't want to hear their own scriptures, Right. But it's interesting how he does it, you know. Uh, shout out to God Logic. Um, uh, we've had different times, uh, you know, saying what's up to each other on, on different uh, lives and stuff like that, or comments. Uh, my, my, my hat goes off to him. Hey Amen. And there's this other guy whose name is Grayson, who read the Bible and uh, who read the Quran in one sitting, and also, I guess, read the Bible in like one sitting or two sittings where he was on live doing it and it took him hours to do so he got popular off of that <laughs> right in case nobody knows that this is how this guy got popular reading different books and um doing things in different religion right he even went to b- go be a, a a monk where he shaved his eyebrows he he's he's what you would consider in the biblical context um just somebody you know bouncing here and there listening to any kind of doctrine or religion, you know, what we would call a, a, a swine, mm-hmm. you know, any, somebody just taking any kind of seat in. That's, mm-hmm. that's what this individual is, mm-hmm. you know. So anyway, when he read the Quran, I guess he skipped over a lot of different parts because he, he liked it. So God Logic decided to have a um, conversation with him and bring different things up that he had no idea Muslims believed in. So let's just watch this video real quick. It's actually... My first time watching it to you guys, so we're going to watch it together and we're going to give our commentary after. What about his moral character? Do you think that, have you heard about his marriage with Aisha? Yeah, I have. And you're okay with that? <laughs> so apparently Prophet Muhammad married a, well, I guess it doesn't say this in the Quran, so I don't even know how this is, where is this coming from, Hadith? It comes from the Hadith, which is, what does how, you know, which is how you know anything about Islam or anything about Muhammad at all. Here it is, let me show you. All right, so this is Sahih Bukhari. So Sahih Bukhari, just to let you know, it's a, it's a book of Hadith. Bukhari is his name, the guy who collected the Hadith, right? Sahih means authentic. This is their second most authoritative book next to the Quran, in Sunni Islam specifically. So, what does it say? Narrated Aisha that the Prophet married her when she was six years old, and he consummated his marriage when she was nine years old, and then she remained with him for nine years. What does consummated mean? It means to have sex. So, the the, um, Prophet married her when she was six and mm-hmm. slept with her when she was nine. When she was nine years old. And all of them say the same thing. The only difference that you might see is whether she was six or seven when he married her. There's a couple that say she was seven, but all of them say are consistent that she was nine years old when he slept with her. We're just gonna skim through Terrible. you're gonna see the same thing. Six mm-hmm. years old, nine years old, here's another one. Same thing, same hadith. Six years old when he married her, nine years old when he, you know, did the thing. All right, here, here's another clear one. Married at Aisha. Now, this is what I was telling you about, six or seven. The messenger of Allah married me when I was six, uh, when I was seven years old. The narrator Suleiman said, or six, he had intercourse with me when I was nine years old. Let Whoa. me show you that she had her dolls with her. She was playing with dolls still. Just in case someone tries to say, oh, she was mature, oh, she was grown. Mm-hmm. Aisha reported that Allah's apostle married her when she was seven years old, and, and she was taken to his house as a bride when she was nine and her dolls were with her. She used to play with dolls still. And when he died, she was 18 years old. So are you 
Are you, so you said you heard about this. This is what all the Hadiths say. Are you okay with this is my question. Well, for the sake of the conversation, I'll assume that they're talking about the same years that we're talking about. So, <laughs> yes. The six and nine-year-old girls that I see today are children. Very tiny. Yeah. Come on, yeah, that's yeah, weird. Up. Come on, and I've, it's not the first time I've heard this. I've always thought that was weird. Yeah. I I did I ponder this a lot. I'm like, well, when does a woman when do, when has God turned a girl from a woman a girl to a woman? Like, when is she uh, able to well, there bear are children? Signs, well, there are signs of maturity um, when she begins to reach puberty. Now that's the beginning stages of her maturing. Right when she hits puberty, that's the signs that she is now beginning to grow and mature. Her body grows, her you know, her body develops, her mind develops. She becomes a young woman, you know, and is is able to bear a child. Now everybody's different with the level or rate that they develop. However, gotta be gotta grow and mature. So God, God has made. I mean, I didn't make the rules, neither did you. God made God made it so that a woman can get pregnant after she hits puberty, which is defined as when she menstruates for the first time? Not really. I mean, uh, like, men menstruation is not a sign that she's ready for sex just because she menstruates. Now, it's possible that she can get pregnant. Well, re I'm ready for, well, but, that mean but that's ready. the purpose of sex is for a child. So if she's able to have a child, then God has made it to where if she's able to have a child and she wants to, you then she can have a child. Bodies. No, that's not the case. That's right not so how that works, Grayson. Mm -hmm. Getting your menstrual cycle doesn't mean that you're ready for a child. Down like head, your like. body's not grown yet. Your body's not fully developed yet. If you wasn't sucked in in, in Islam, you would be able to easily answer this question. But because you're sucked in Islam, well, no, not with a child. Okay. Only she only sleep with a woman. Okay. So, do you believe that a prophet of God would sleep with a little would, would sleep with a little girl, sleep with a child? Mm. But what defines a little girl? No, he's choking. Oh he's choking. Able to get choking oh. Let's say a six-year-old, my bro. Is, is there, a, is there a, any world where a six-year-old or a nine-year-old <laughs> is a grown woman? My guy. My guy. Well, I don't know any six or nine-year-old that can get pregnant. So with oh. what I've seen, no. Okay. So, so do you think a prophet of God would sleep with a six or nine-year-old? Straight headlock. Can't even breathe. <laughs> it's a simple a six or nine-year-old girl who cannot get pregnant? Mm -mm. No. I didn't ask that. What Let's say she can get Bro, pregnant. Let's say it's possible question, that she's bled before. Let's say she's bled at six. Is it okay to sleep with her at six years old since so she bled? I'm not. I didn't ask if you're not. I asked, is it okay? For someone else to do this? <laughs> anyway. Oh, boy. <laughs> you cannot be serious right now. Give me an airplane ticket out of here. <laughs> I've been taught that that's wrong, so I would say don't do that. Oh, okay. No. You say don't do that. No, that's Muhammad, what I've been taught. Muhammad did it. Muhammad taught? Hypocrite. So well, what you, you, what, would what you defines a, No, a no excuses, bit. Grayson. No excuses. Would you be able to condemn Muhammad for sleeping with a little girl? If she was a little girl, yes. Do you think a six-year-old or a nine-year-old is a little girl? The six or nine-year-olds that I see today, yes. They are little girls. Okay. So Muhammad slept with a nine-year-old. He slept with a little girl. Will you condemn Muhammad for doing that? If Muhammad slept with a little girl, then yes. According to the sources, he did. According to Islam, that's who, that's who you're, they're trying to he tell you to follow. Someone who slept with a little girl and said that God showed her, showed her to him in a dream. You're using God as an excuse for him to be able to do this. And become a woman. Would you, think that he's, would you think he's a predator for going after a little girl? in elementary at the age of 50. Yeah. That's what Muhammad did. Mm. <laughs> you keep pausing. Muhammad, Muhammad's a predator, right? That tongue time. Hey. Cat got your tongue. I don't and know what to say. I'm speechless. To, to, you, would, you would believe that, that's a, that a predator is a prophet of God who uses God as his crux? All right. <laughs> so before I go ahead and let you, let you guys uh give your thoughts on this situation let me just say this muslims believe they follow muhammad like we follow jesus all right so after hearing all that what do you guys what's your what's your take <laughs> let, me, let me start off by saying this mark 
at no point in our lives should we sit here and justify pedophilia. Amen. Right. I don't care where you come from. I don't care what you've been taught. You are a grown man. You're you're a grown man. So you know what age of consent is. Right. You can tell that anybody under the age of menstruation, if I'm saying that word right, menstruation. Yeah, amen. If they're under the age of menstruation, you should not be touching them. You should not have the thought to touch them. Right. Okay, well, since he said that, let's call it how we see it. He's a map. He's a minor oh, oh, attractive minor pedophile. Shaper. Not person. See, we they, they trying to say, oh, yeah, he's a minor attractive person. No, you're a minor attractive pedophile. Right. That's what you are. What what the word is saying is what you are. Right. Let's be honest here. Muhammad, man, I ain't got nothing against you, but the proof is in the pudding. The rubber done hit the road. You wearing a T-shirt, and then we asking your boy to explain. What's his name, Bryson? Bryson. Grayson. Yeah. Grayson. Oh, Grayson. Yeah. yeah, Grayson. We asking him the same question over and over again, and he got that Popeye's biscuit in his throat. <laughs> you know, the Popeye's biscuit is dry, and if right. you got nothing to drink, you threw. So what I'm saying is this. <laughs> he couldn't answer the question because what we were saying was facts. It was true. Yeah. There's no more to go back and forth. Muhammad was a pedophile, and if you follow Muhammad, Hey, then you're telling me that you believe in a pedophile. That means you a pedophile. I got to watch my children. Hide your kids. Hide your wife. Right. <laughs> yeah. That, that, that's actually why a lot of different um, Muslim Islamic countries, they marry children. Grown men marry children. They see nothing wrong with it. Why would they see something wrong with that when the prophet that they follow married a child? When he was 54, she was six. Why would... Why would somebody see something wrong with that if their prophet did it? The only reason people out here see something wrong mm. with it is because they're have they've been they've been brainwashed and they understand Western uh, so they're they're in a Western civilization they're in a Western society, right? They're not back over there where Islamic uh, law is 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 running rampant. Our Sharia law is running rampant. You know, what I mean, where they can take your life if you commit adultery. It's not the same over there as over here. You know what I mean? Go ahead, Nick. Nick. Man, that's crazy. Like, like, I was looking it up. Like, little girls, like, girls don't even really come into puberty mm -hmm. until around that age, like 9, 10, 11. So, like, she's prepubescent at that point. Like, that's crazy. Like, how are you marrying a, marrying a little girl who's, like, not even at that stage in her life yet and then you you're consummating with her possibly before she even starts that process like that's that's just right. crazy to me yeah man you know I, I listen i have a niece that's like 10. you know what i mean listen you guys seen corey's daughter royalty she's mm. 10. Hey man, yeah. wow yeah you got know I me mean? yeah so listen th this is how crazy this is <laughs> Dennis's son is four. Correct. Two years more than that, he married that he married that child. You gotta really look at it like that. You got know I mean? You gotta really look at it like that. Or you look at Sister Kara's daughter, uh, Nailani. Mm -hmm. She's about yeah. to be six. Wow. Look at it like that. You know? We're, we're we're seeing it and we're looking at it and we're like, we're trying to look at it in, in that in that type of area, like, oh, okay. You married a six year old, that's okay. Well, what's, but look at it actually thinking about a six year old. Hmm. Right. Then it's really gonna creep you out. Then it's really gonna mess with your mind. Like, oh my goodness, a six. What in the world? They just stopped wearing diapers a couple years earlier. That's insanity. They're just now forming sentences. Right. Hey, some still probably is wearing diapers. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah, baby's still learning how to tie her shoes. Right. And you think it's okay to marry that? All right. That's crazy. No, for sure. They still coming into a place of really learning how to form full sentences, communicating with another individual. Amen. You and know let me what just, I mean? let me just throw this out here. Like, Go ahead, Nick. Let me clear the air real quick. Go ahead. Go ahead, bro. 
six-year-old and a nine-year-old from back in the day, it's the same thing as it is today. That ain't <laughs> ain't right. no difference. I'm just, yeah, I'm just saying, I'm just throw that out there right now. Just right. for everybody to kind of wrap your head around. We want ain't facts. nothing, ain't nothing changed. Right. A six-year-old back then is the same as a six-year-old now. Same right. thing with a nine-year-old. Don't change. We want facts. Right. Exactly. We're not dealing with evolution. We didn't come from apes. Thank you. Okay. A nine-year-old and a six-year-old today is the same thing that a nine-year-old and six-year-old was today. Was, uh, what, 15, 1,500 years ago? When, yeah, when, when did Muhammad come? About 15, 1,400 years ago? Yep. You got to think about things like that, you know? Muhammad also had 11 wives. I believe it was 11 wives. Isn't it interesting how in Galatians 1, it says, even if an angel comes to you with a different doctrine, let that angel be cursed. Hmm. And Muhammad said an angel came to him. Nobody seen the angel. Nobody seen the angel, but an angel came to him. Then he made a different doctrine. And different things that he wanted that was appeasing his flesh, he also put in the doctrine so that he could have it. Mm. Not only that, but Joseph Smith also said an angel came to him. How many wives did Joseph Smith have? Joseph Smith have? Like 30-something? He wow. came up with Mormonism. Wow. Nobody seen him talking to an angel either. But somehow, his doctrine is different too. And he did all kinds of things that appeased his flesh. Hmm. You know what they call Joseph Smith? The American Muhammad. Wow. Yeah. The American Muhammad. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. 30 wives. Man, I see, I, I, when I look at Yeshua, I, I see him dying to his flesh. I don't see none of these, none of these so-called prophets dying to their flesh, dying to their, their, their desires. Right. You know, I, I see y'all, y'all feeding it. Mm -hmm. Y'all, y'all trying to please it. Right. They liars. They, they, they liars. They lying prophets. Lying. God ain't send you. You don't have a message from God. You got a message from Satan. Okay. He can appear as an angel of light. He he was an angel before. He still is an angel. He's just a fallen angel. He can masquerade. So Amen. the message you right. got that is going against the doctrine of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. I need you to look me in the look in the mirror. Look me in the eyes, and I'm trying to tell you the truth. Right. That's not the message from God. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. It's it's you feeding your flesh. You ain't dying to your flesh. Come pick up your cross. Come back to the outer court. This the way. Right. Amen. Mm -hmm. You know what's interesting is, like I'm reading a book right now. You know, I'm pretty deep in. Um, Carl, he can't accept the captives for you. It's about this this young lady who became a who became a witch. She joined a coven. You know what I mean? Became a high priestess. Then she became a regional bride of Christ. Uh, Lord, forgive me. A regional bride of Satan. And um, she just goes deep into different things of Satanism and deeper different things of Satan and how she you know she been with Satan and slept with Satan and married Satan and different things on this such. You know who they hate? Christians. Not just any Christian, true Christians. You know who they don't ever... Satanists ain't out here trying to put spells on Muslims or Buddhists or Hindus. You know why? That's right. Because they're already in a place of deception. They're already mm. in a place of darkness. They're not, they're not in a place where the, where the enemy has to look at them and be worried. But you know who has to be worried when it looks at? Christians, true Christians, because they're coming into a place where they're coming back into the image and likeness of God. Amen. And if they get into that place, they're fully taking dominion and authority over the devil in his kingdom. But you know who's not going to do that? People who don't even believe the spirit of God is meant to be dwelling inside of them. Amen. Mm. Muslims believe that they're only meant to be slaves of God. They do not believe that the spirit of God is meant to be inside of them. They don't. Be they believe it's shirk to even believe in these type of things. They don't believe in, in sharing. They don't believe in God sharing his attributes in, uh, at all. Mm. What? So wow. when Muhammad came over 500 years after Jesus, and Jesus died on the cross, Jesus died for our salvation. You got the early church fathers, many different Christians being martyred for their faith. Amen. Many different Christians believing in salvation, believing uh, coming back into where Adam fell from. Then you have this man come out of nowhere with the devil in his ear. That's right. Mm -hmm. Saying that, yeah, he didn't really die for you. Yeah, God's not really meant to dwell in your temple. Yeah, you're not really meant to come back into the likeness and image of God. Who else do you think is going to be doing that except someone who doesn't want you to understand that you're meant to take dominion over your mindset, over your body, and over the enemy's kingdom? Mm -mm, the devil. Right. You said that he didn't, they had no Bible verses of this, right? There's no Bible verses at all. He just ran into an angel, and, and this is what he had. Yeah, and no, nobody he came into a cave. Well, I want Bible. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I want. I want Bible. Amen. Give me Bible yeah. chapter and verse. You know, what's interesting, too, is like uh, it says in the Quran that he came to um, confirm what was already written, talking about the gospel and the Torah. Right. But when you look at the God, when you look at the, the Bible, it, it, 
what they believe contradicts the Bible. Then they try to say the Bible is corrupt. Then you're like, okay, well, well, by the Bible that we have today is the same when I was around, when Muhammad was around, so how can it possibly be corrupt? It's just you step into a place of blind faith mm. at that point. There's no understanding. It's just, if Allah said it, you know, I shall, uh, mishallah, right. uh, mashallah, something like that. Meaning, uh, you know, uh, uh, I cannot believe, I, I can't remember this right now. Three blind mice. If God wills it. Mm. You know what I mean? No like, the Lord wants us to understand the Lord. The Lord wants us, us to talk to the Lord face to face, truly come into understanding his revelation and Amen. being re revealed who Amen. he is. Stepping into his character and function. Hallelujah. Truly praying in the Lord's name, Jesus' name, Jesus' onoma. Hallelujah. His character and his authority. They won't ever understand it, and neither will any religion when they don't they don't step into who God wants them to be. It's true deception. Amen. 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 Um, all right, before we head out, y'all got anything else, else to say? <laughs> Amen. Like they look, I, I've said it before. If if you don't line up with all the prior prophets that came before you, go ahead, Nick. Right. You that's not it. I'm right. just telling you right now, you're in deception. Yeah. Come out of it. Come out of it, my people. Hey, man. Come out of it. Yeah. Hey. yeah. Come out. <laughs> you can't hide. <laughs> you got to say that. You can run, but you can't hide. Hey, man. I'll say this. The Lord wants you to step into your true purpose. All right. He wants you to step into your fullness. Hey, man. Truly understanding who he is in you. Hmm. Who you yeah. are in him. Amen. He wants you to become one with him. Amen. John seventeen twenty one. Amen. Amen. We are supposed to become sons of God. Amen. The the Bible says all of creation waits for the manifestation of the sons of God. Amen. We are we have an inheritance. God is our Father. Amen. He wants to give us all of Himself Amen. to bring us into unity with Himself. If 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 you ain't teaching that. It's not it. Amen. Amen. And you know. Ali, you know, um, it says we will know as we are known. Mm. Aliyah. And when we truly come into that place, it, it it it's speaking of understanding who we actually are the way God sees us. You know, God seen Israel before Jacob did. Hallelujah. But he stepped into who who, who he was meant to be and became Israel. Amen. Amen. God Amen. seen Abraham before Abram did, you know, but he Amen. stepped into who God wanted him to be. Hallelujah. And that goes for all those who are truly sons of the Lord. The Lord sees you for who you are meant to be. But to be that, you need to be walking in um, the purpose that the Lord wants you to walk in. Hallelujah. It's just not going to happen if you don't choose to. You got different people out here that believe in predestination and stuff like that. No. If you don't choose God... It's not going to happen. Amen. So Amen. walk into your purpose. Hallelujah. Choose the Lord. May the Lord begin to work on you and pray for these Muslims who are following this type of stuff. You know, you got different celebrities and stuff like that who who choose to be Muslim out of ignorance. You know, they see that you can have four wives. They see that when you go to heaven, you have you get you get virgins. It's like it's all flesh. You know what I mean? You got Muslims out here who really think you can go to you can go to heaven and have intercourse with a whole lot of virgins. That's what they believe uh, uh, heaven hmm. is. It's absolutely disturbing. Like that's what their leader told him heaven is. You know why? Because he was operating out of his flesh, his desires. That's why when he wanted to marry a child, he made it okay. Hmm. Period. Ooh, you know. So, hallelujah. I I I I, I pray. My understanding comes and the Lord continues to pour out his spirit because we already know that in Iran, uh, over one million Muslims have come to Jesus. Hallelujah. Over 50,000 mosques have been shut down Hallelujah. because of dreams and visions that the Lord Jesus Christ has given different Muslims out there. So we just pray that that continues to happen all over the world. Hallelujah. In Saudi Arabia and Dubai and Afghanistan and, 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 and Pakistan. Hallelujah. Amen. Nigeria. All these different places that are swarmed with Muslims. We pray for the Lord to... Hallelujah. Pour his spirit out on those on those lands and give them dreams and visions and for them to truly come into who they are actually meant to be. Hallelujah. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess mm -hmm. and truly come into the true teachings of the Lord and the revelation of the Lord so they can begin to understand who they are 
and begin to climb in the kingdom. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. We love you guys. God bless you. Long.